right, let's get into what we've really been excited about, right? It definitely wasn't talking Ooh. about friend Robin. I'm excited. Um, and having a real good discussion with him, of course. Yes. It, it's going to be about you and I yelling at each other over <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Because that's what this is going to be. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's it's uh, happening again, boys. We're, back. Oh, We're doing it all fuck. over again. Oh, God. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the Viking game we, mm-hmm. that was the worst kept secret of all time we've all known about for a year. Oh, I didn't know. It came as a Has to me. been revealed. Yeah. The <laughs> only surprise is Dub McDevitt is back as narrative director. Oh, my Booyah. God. Great surprise. Astro Fishmail yeah. is the game director. Already knew that. Creative director. And so creative part. director. Sorry, not the game director. Creative director yeah. now. And there's no assassins in it again so that's no. <laughs> an issue um yes, that's a fucking are. issue there are assassins in this game oh god i want to play as an assassin remember we what are, i said listen, to you I was- listen here i'm gonna break things down for you because i've got all the information in my head because i had to make this video yesterday and yeah, people right. were throwing things at me so let me explain i just made a reaction video where i literally just read the info on camera and watched the trailer on camera, and then gave my thoughts, and then I, I really watched didn't a bit do anything of it. afterwards. I watched your reaction to the trailer, and it was, like, probably the same as me. It was, like, the same reaction, where I was just blankly staring at the screen for a bit, like, <laughs> oh, they're Vikings fighting, like, cool. <laughs> and then you were just like, what? The fucking- yeah, and then the Hidden Blade, oh, okay. and I'm like, oh, Hidden Blade. And then I'm like, oh, he's wearing it like a fucking nonce. So, yeah. Well, know. but also, someone, one of the comments was like, he didn't even notice on the front of his wrist. I'm like, because, I, not that I didn't notice, it's like, who the fuck cares? Like, what? who the fuck cares? Oh, I do. I cared. Ugh. Bothered me. Rubbed me the wrong way. Um, anyway, look, let's talk about this. So, um, the the information, basically, that we've got so far in terms of where the story's headed is from Darby and Ash talking about it, and it appears to be a bit of a black flag, honestly. It almost feels like Darby is trying to... He's doing a very similar take on the story um, in that we're playing as this character, Eivor. A Viking um, trained by assassins. Basically, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, who is either a male or female, depending on who you pick. Darby has said that both choices are canon, and there's a trick to it, but you're not going to find it until you play the game. Um, if anyone else Makes was saying sense. that, I would roll my eyes and call him a cunt. But Darby said it, and so I'm, <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine. If Darby I... says that, then uh, maybe there's something to it. Um I trust Darby. So that's interesting to see exactly how that's going to play out, how they managed to make both choices canon uh, in not a contrived way. Um, so, you know, we'll wait. And, and all of the things we've heard from Darby, I mean, we'll get into this later, but everything Darby said is so Darby and so right. It's so like, Darby. It, it makes me so happy hearing some of these words that he said. And I'll get some of the quotes up um, as we as we go on. But essentially... He, he, Darby April, has been so Darby recently. Even mm-hmm. when I, I sent him a message... After the game oh, got yeah, announced, yeah, I'm like, oh, so this is the game you were talking about. And he goes, oh, I'm not sure. I'll have to check. And I'm like, that's all he sent me. That's, you didn't know rather response. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That like, is classic Darby. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so our boy Eivor goes to... Uh, he's, he's Eivor, I said in my video, and you said Eivor. Yeah. So we're his, fucking yeah. like, yeah. His yeah, name's yeah, Eivor, right. though. So that's... Eivor. So that's that, Eivor. Aloy. Um, Aloy. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but Eivor goes, so he lives in Norway, or she lives in Norway, but it's... No, he is a okay. white blonde man, okay. like me, Good. With blue um, eyes and a mustache. <laughs> so Eivor lives in um, Norway, but there's not a lot of room for expansion in Norway. Uh, it's a very, like, the landscape doesn't really allow for it. And he wants to have his own settlement so that his family can be safe. And so basically what he does is he takes his family and his friends and his sort of tribe, I guess, and they go to England. And that's where most of the game takes place is in England. However, you can revisit norway but most of the game is england uh there's four kingdoms um and you've got major cities the major cities in the game are london winchester and york i believe um and uh the four kingdoms full of you know various villages and things across england um i see what you're saying james (laughs) 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 maybe that's we can establish the rooks before before the rooks were ever established yeah 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 yeah, yeah, oh that'd be incredible i'm gonna dress in all green it's gonna be incredible oh Um, god but uh at some point i love that i didn't have to say the line i I just had to (laughs) i knew (laughs) you know what i was Um, saying so abel meets the assassins and his point of view or his goals align with the assassins in some way they didn't go deep into it because darby doesn't want to wear spoilers um but at some, so he'll work with the assassins, and at some point he gets a hidden blade. Uh, Asher said the reason he wears it on the top of his wrist instead of under his wrist is because 
he's a Viking, and he and Vikings want to show off their weaponry. They don't want to conceal anything. They want to be all up front. Is it like also he refuses to make the um, sacrifice of an assassin and cut off his finger? Yeah, probably. He's probably like, no, I'm not fucking doing that. You know, I'm, I'm, I want, I want everyone to see this fucking weapon. I'm not cutting my fucking finger off this bullshit belief system you have or whatever. This is so. He, but he still wears the hidden blade because I mean, it's functional. It's a great weapon. Um, yeah. And so that's all we know so far. But what I believe is at some point he'll come around to it and he'll become an assassin through great loss, a personal journey. It seems that's what Darby's talking about because he said um, this is uh, first and foremost they have to establish a personal motive for what's happening and a personal journey for this protagonist um there's got to be an own a, a, your, their own personal struggle and that but here's into but, the war but this is what i love about guys. this there's no h- empty husk character avor is a character <clears throat> with a real journey and mm-hmm. the and we'll talk about the dialogue options in a bit, but he's doing it the correct way an RPG needs to be done. Not that you can go and fuck an old lady and then kill an innocent civilian or mm-hmm. cheat a merchant out of money or then go be a hero somewhere on another island. Here's like Eivor does Eivor shit and yes. you choose dialogue based on what Eivor would say. <clears throat> Eivor would do all of those things the same way Geralt of Rivia. All his dialogue choices are still Geralt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a quote from Darby um, talking about this, which I think is a really, really good quote. Um, if I can it's straight out it. of Odyssey broke me. It it's literally, straight out of your yeah, video. it's straight out of um, Odyssey broke me. So this is what it's it almost says, like so. they all watched it, James. It's, it's almost um, like they watched it. It's and, almost like they watched it. Mm, uh, but the good thing is as well about this is like like a lot of people could say, well, okay, well if they are like saying the same stuff as Odyssey broke me, then maybe they just watch the video and they're just spouting nonsense. But actually, what it is is Darby gets it completely, and he didn't even have to watch my video to get it. I know he got it beforehand. Um, yeah. And so what he says, this is the quote about how they're handling dialogue choices. He says, It was very important for us to create a coherent personality. I always find there are two ways to go with a role-playing game where you get to have dialogue choices. You either get to be a blank slate and you create your character, which is one way of doing it. Your choices decide whether you're a wise-cracking character or a stoic, or you have a distinct personality and your choices orbit in the spectrum of possible responses. They take the drama in different directions, but the character remains coherent. We opted for the latter. We really wanted a coherent personality that people can say, that's definitely Eivor, and that is something Eivor would say. We don't want players to have multiple different types of Eivor. That was a creative decision we made, and it worked out really well. So, like I've said on on Twitter, uh, do I want Assassin's Creed to be an RPG? No. But if you're going to, this is how you do it. Um, This is how you do it, 100%. And from everything Darby has been saying about, you know, Assassins and Templars and the fact that um, Assassins and Templars play a major role in this. And they, he he kept saying, like, if you watch the breakdown for the trailer when Ash is talking about, uh, you know, this being a Viking story and and, and we we really wanted to give you that Viking fantasy because obviously Ash is a gameplay guy. That's what he's talking about, giving that Viking fantasy. Ash, um, Darby backs him up again and says, as much as we wanted to tell this Viking story in a Viking world, we wanted to make sure that people aren't just playing a Viking game. They're playing an Assassin's Creed game. And Darby is very... I feel like he's very conscious about that fact because he brings Darby it up all is the, the time. The caretaker. Interview. He's the only one mm-hmm. we had left. We didn't even think we had him. We thought it was over narratively. Yeah. This Darby being back to me is like the only one. No one at Ubisoft knows Assassin's Creed in terms of narrative and lore mm-hmm. better than that man. No one mm-hmm. that still works at Ubisoft yeah. on Assassin's Creed knows it better than him. Even to Ashraf. And I love, we all love Ashraf here. We fucking love him. And I trust that he's going to make a fantastic game. I have no doubt, and you will agree with me, we both have zero doubts that this game will be better than Odyssey. Literally zero doubt. Yeah, easily, of course. Easily. Easily better. Already, I'm like, it's better. Already, Mm -hmm. it's better. One, it's a better setting. Mm Mm-hmm. Other than that fact alone, but also just based on the characters. If you have to have character choices, this is the way to do it. If you have to do like this is the way to do it. Darby, who's writing the script and is the narrative director, mm. knows every aspect of all of the games that have come before in terms of story, including the shit ones. Mm-hmm. And he's like, we're going to make it. I love this quote where he's like, we're going to make it mean something. Everything's going to fit together. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, one bad thing, though, James, about the story is that Layla Hassan is back in the modern day. Yeah, I mean, I like I've said, uh, I don't care about the modern day anymore. And even though, uh, like, Thank Darby God, has said... Co- it's taken six years of me as your friend, but you finally come around. Yeah, Darby has said some things that, if this were, if this were 2014, I'd be hyped as fuck for. But 
I don't care. I don't care if he they he get if he fucking hits this out of the park. I don't care because the good the, what what made the modern day great is not contained single stories. It's overarching stories that span years, and mm. you you follow this story. You get a little bit each game, and each game links to the next. That's what's great about modern day. They haven't done that for an incredibly long time, and I don't care because of that fact. So as Darby says. Um, this, we're doing something in this game that he's wanted to do for years and he's finally found the way that he can do it properly, which I assume means that he's done it in a way that Ubisoft will let him. Um, right. But I think it's too little too late at this point. And...